we kind of need to reassess everything in the bottom quarter of this Roland Garros draw here in 2022 because Daniil Medvedev in the lead up is pretty much out of the picture. You guys know I do my French Open power rankings. I do the top 10 and then I pick four other guys who uh, I feel like just kind of miss out on the top 10 aren't quite there. Medvedev was never on there. And a lot of that was, of course, because he wasn't playing, but I could have added him onto the last French Open power ranking, and I didn't, because here's a guy who didn't play a single match until Geneva, and then lost convincingly to Richard Gasquet in the first round there. Hadn't played since the Sunshine Double because he had hernia surgery. And you know that Things are not going to come easier for him on clay. Everything is going to come harder. But what has he done so far? He has not dropped a set. He has not been taken past 6-4. He beat Facundo Bagnus in the first round. He beat Laszlo Gera in the second round. You know, Bagnus is a good clay court player on the qualifier level. Jera is a good clay court player on like the ATP 250, maybe 500 level, uh, more 250. Ketsmanovic, now you're talking about a player who is a top 30 guy this year uh, for sure and has has played some, some really, really strong tennis. Recently took Schwartzman to 7-6 in the third in Rome, um, you know, lost to Nadal in Madrid, made the semifinal before that in Munich, uh, lost to Djokovic in Belgrade, and before that had that great run um, in Miami, only losing to Alcaraz, quarterfinals at both Indian Wells in Miami and Miami. So man's had a great 2022. He is fine on the clay. I had Medvedev losing to Ketsmanovic pre-tournament. But let me frame this before I get into the match. And I want to talk about Medvedev and Ketsmanovic. Straight set win for Medvedev. What happened there? I just kind of want to frame for you guys how I'm feeling about that result at face value. I'm surprised by it because I didn't think Medvedev was coming into this week in form or with fitness. I am not surprised by it because of the clay factor. The clay factor to me is unsurprising. And for those of you who have a good memory and was following the things I was saying last year, this will sound familiar to you. I think Medvedev is going to have a far better career on clay than most people expect. If you are expecting Medvedev to be someone who loses pre-quarter finals consistently at Roland Garros throughout the course of his career, I think you're in for a surprise. I think it's a guy who's going to go deep in clay court tournaments on a fairly regular basis. Because I think that the era that we had your Pete Sampras's and Boris Beckers of the world winning Wimbledon and the U.S. Open and the Australian Open with uh, with regularity and then coming to Roland Garros and then I, each of them made one semifinal throughout their entire career. I think those days are over. I think they're long gone. The surfaces have homogenized. This, the baseline styles now are effective across all surfaces. You don't have to really adjust in any drastic way to have success on all the surfaces playing pretty much the same way. Now, surfaces matter, but the margins are small out there, and they matter to a certain extent. Uh, that swings, swings results on tour when you're talking about small margins. When you're talking about, for example, Djokovic playing Nadal, similar level players. That's going to swing the margins. When you are talking about uh, Adrian Manorino facing Pedro Martinez. Grass, Manorino. Clay, Martinez. Guess what? They're similar level players. So the surface swings it. What I think we are done seeing is elite level hardcore players becoming non-factors on clay. That era is done. Clay didn't suit Andy Murray. He's probably the fifth best player on clay throughout his prime. 
I might maybe favor Ferrer over him on clay. If not, he was the fourth best player on clay throughout his prime. Clay didn't suit his, suit his game. It's no coincidence that Nadal has won each major twice, that Djokovic has won each major twice, because the modern game lends itself to this cross-surface success. So what am I trying to say here? I'm trying to say that Daniil Medvedev, although he is worse on clay, he's still probably probably the sixth through 10 best clay court player in the world. I might put him at number six. If you want to throw some names out there like Kasper Ruud and Diego Schwartzman and, I don't know, Yannick Sinner. If you want to argue some of those guys are better than Medvedev on clay, I, I will hear that argument. That's okay. Uh, but you're going to have a lot of trouble getting past those couple of names, in my opinion. So, Daniil Medvedev, who is easily a top three player on hardcourt, becomes a top 10 player on clay. That is the difference. Those are the margins. Those are the small margins. But it will not make him a non-factor. So, let's assess this. First, let's get into the Ketsmanovic match, actually. Um, I thought Medvedev's depth was a killer here. You know, Ketsmanovic is a baseline hugger, and he just doesn't have that that baseline power that a lot of the best clay court players do have to kind of drop back behind the baseline and to create damage from far behind the baseline uh, on a clay court. He doesn't really have that. So he's a baseline hugger and he relies on recognizing a short ball and kind of stepping in and taking the ball early and changing direction. And it just didn't feel like Medvedev's depth in trading was giving him an opportunity to attack and to do damage off the ground. He just couldn't step in and change direction. And he doesn't have the power, like I would say, like a team or a Vavrinka or obviously uh, a Nadal, for example, would have where, okay, you hit the ball deep, but they have so much power, it doesn't really matter. And that they can still they can still hurt you regardless of how deep you keep the ball in the court. Ketsmanovic isn't that guy. He looked underpowered. And I think he spent the early portions of the match kind of getting dictated by Medvedev. And then he started to get more aggressive and overpressing. And then the errors started to come as he was overplaying a little bit. But Medvedev just looks good. He just looks really good. He he was still getting free points from his serve. Uh, 19 unreturned serves on 79 service points. That's about 25% of points um, that he is getting a unreturned serve off of. That is the area that I would be most critical of Ketsmanovic. I thought there were some times that Medvedev was landing his first serve, not hitting his spot. Ketsmanovic getting a good look at the return and still missing. So uh, I think Mimir's pace absorption is really good. So I was surprised to see him miss so many returns. Uh, I, I think his return is usually better than it was today. I was also really impressed, though, with Medvedev's plus one shot. Nine winners to five unforced errors on the third shot of the rally on serve. Um, the one, one of the break points that he faced, he only faced two in the match. He uh, hit a perfect first serve flat out wide on the ad side and then hit a forehand drive volley to finish. I don't remember what happened on the second break point, but he saved that one as well. So his serve did not get broken. Uh, I did notice that on his forehand, and I thought he was doing this at Roland Garros last year as well. I feel like he's adding some RPMs. I think he's hitting it a little bit spinnier. He's still not a monster when it comes to pace generation. Like, I don't think that he has solved that. You can call it a weakness. I would say it's more of a lack of strength than a weakness. Uh, he hasn't really solved that. But I thought he came up with a lot of good angles on the forehand. And he was able to be aggressive without making a lot of mistakes. And that extra topspin that he provides, it's just going to give him that extra margin, I think, to just miss less. And also to help him find those angles, which I thought he did very well. And while I don't think that he was hitting a ton of forehand winners from neutral positions, I think that he was doing a good job of 
applying pressure and dictating and staying on top of the points with his forehand and doing so error-free, which hasn't always been the case for Medvedev in the past. But it was his backhand that really stood out to me as a just a killer weapon in this match. Uh, I was super impressed with his ability to to finish with his backhand from the baseline, which is very difficult to do on clay. But we know that Medvedev has one of the best backhands in the world and he can flatten it out and he can really, he can really up the miles per hour on that shot um, at times. And it was a standout for me in this match. Lastly, I thought Medvedev's focus was just relentless. He played every point the same. Ketsmanovic battled hard, in my opinion, despite the score line and, Maybe some people might watch the match and disagree with me, but I think that he fought through a lot of a lot of tough service games that that he was able to hold. Medvedev was just in each and every one. He was very relentless, uh, game in and game out. No loose service games by Medvedev, and every single return game he was locked in, engaged, making plenty of balls and continuing to ask a lot of Ketsmanovic. So it was an incredible performance by Medvedev. Now let's look at Daniil Medvedev's draw, which gets into, I would say, the the title of this video, Is He a Contender Here? So he has Marin Cilic next. It's another guy who um, kind of is like Medvedev. He might be on a clay court, Marin Cilic, but he is not going to adjust his game and play some sort of clay court style. Chilich is still going to be serve, plus one, uh, hyper aggressive on, uh, aggression on the second serve return, shortening points, playing big power tennis from the baseline. That's going to be Marin Chilich. And Medvedev is going to do a similar thing on serve. He's going to, you know, still have that, that big first serve and try to have a lot of plus one, serve plus one success. But obviously Medvedev has the other dimension to his game where he can grind and he can defend. And by the way, the movement looked really good for Medvedev. I, I don't want to, I don't want to gloss over that. I thought out of the corners he looked very comfortable, and the court coverage was fantastic, and the speed was there. So Medvedev just has way more to his game than Chilich, and Medvedev is three and zero against Chilich in his career. And I do think that Marin is going to really be bothered by the depth that Medvedev brings on the return of serve and the amount of returns that Medvedev is going to bring back into the court. And I think Medvedev's a heavy favorite against Marin Cilic in the next round. Now you look at the at the quarterfinal where you have the winner of Sinner and Rublev. It's a match that I slightly favor Sinner in. Medvedev's 3-0 and against Sinner and 5-1 and against Rublev. He's undefeated against those players in matches where he doesn't run into the camera and lose his S-H-I-T. Um, again, I felt like that was kind of a fluky win for Rublev. No disrespect, but Medvedev was up a set and a break and completely lost his mind. And I thought that played a big factor. Medvedev's a great matchup against both of those players, and that is because the linear power that both Sinner and Rublev bring to the court, which usually rushes their opponents and overwhelms their opponents with pure weight of shot, that does not phase Daniil Medvedev. With his pace absorption and his court positioning and his defense, Daniil Medvedev is never going to really be bothered by weight of shot. He is never going to be rushed by players who take the ball very early and hit it very, very hard. You are going to have to come up with angles and finish at the net if you are going to want to hit through the defenses of Medvedev. And quite frankly, that is not the strength offensively of either of those players. Medvedev serves a little bit bigger and has a little bit better uh, craft to his game when it comes to the auxiliary tools when the point breaks down and there's, you know, less rhythm. So I don't think it's a coincidence that Medvedev has positive head-to-heads against those players. And, you know, does the clay help both of them? Do I favor... Do I, do I think that they will trouble Medvedev more on a clay court than any other surface? 
absolutely. But it's very winnable for Medvedev, both of those players, both of those matchups. Where I think Medvedev runs into a problem is when he faces an elite athlete on clay, someone with elite court coverage like Stefano Tsitsipas, like Nadal or Djokovic or Alcaraz, where I do think that Medvedev's offense is going to be stifled, that his lack of pace generation and power from the back becomes an issue against those players who are able to just make Medvedev hit too many extra balls, neutralize too many points, get back in it, uh, turn defense into offense too easily. Until Medvedev faces that kind of player, and Rublev and Sinner is not that kind of player, then you have to love Daniil Medvedev's chances. Is he a contender to win Roland Garros? I'm still not there yet. But can he make a semifinal? And if the draw opens up for him in some sort of surprising way, can he even find himself alive on Sunday? I think the answer is yes. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.